Hey guys, this is part two of episode three, the removal and installment of the front frame rails. So uh, my previous episode, you saw, or excuse me, previous part of this episode, you saw that uh, I used a Liskey diagram to get the measurement from the elongated hole on the frame rail uh, to the opposite side for support hole. And that was 66.375 or 66 and 3 eighths. So I came up to SolidWorks and I plugged that in and uh, then I mirrored the elongated hole to the other rail and then I ended up in the center. And I was like, all right, well, what other measure can I get that you know we don't have? So I got this guy. So from the center of the four sport hole on the same side to the rearmost center edge of that elongated hole, I got 59.291 inches. So that'll just help me get the, the frame rails in their pockets uh, equally on both sides because remember everything on this build is starting with the four supports being in the correct spot. So uh, I'm going to go downstairs and clean up uh, the floor supports, the core support, um, and all along the, uh, the dash. So just get the old spot welds off and hit with some weld through primer and just prepping it to put back on the car. And then I uh, will try and see if I have enough time to get the floor supports to their correct height um, to the baseline or the laser, laser level of uh, 5.736 inches. And then possibly sit the the frame rails into them. I don't think that'll happen because uh, it's kind of cold and I need to let the wealthy primer dry. So, okay, I'm going to go down and get started. All right, so getting started. Um, as you can see, having the front off, got it laid out. Got some stuff I want to do to clean up. I want to get these guys off and then uh, same thing over here. And then there's some slag from the torque boxes that are on the other side. And then I want to get those off as well. Let's get these parts cleaned up. I'll show you that the metal left over right there. Get that off. And uh, a lot easier to work with with all this stuff apart. Set up on a table. And then get in here and clean all these welds off the dash. I'm only going to go to, to this one. Anything that's on this metal in here, I don't care about because it's getting replaced when I put the side panels in for the fastback conversion. So I'm gonna start with that and then I will hit it with some weld through primer and we'll be good to go. So let me get started on that. All right, so just got done cleaning up. Took me about 15 minutes with the angle grinder and I was used, just used one of these discs, these flapper discs, they're fantastic. Roughly 10 bucks, last a while from, uh, from Lowe's and, uh, and it worked real well. Uh, as you can see, nice clean metal. Uh, should note, so remember I discussed in a previous episode about how my welder, you know, I got it back, it was in from the, the, the wrong polarity and bad on me for not checking. But it's just interesting to see, like when I was cleaning these welds up, like, so there's one, that's how they looked, right? Well, when I was cleaning it, I'm not, some of them just literally popped right off the metal. Like there was no fusion whatsoever. So. It just goes to show that, you know, no matter how high the heat setting, you're really not going to get a strong weld. It may, it may have hold, it probably wouldn't have had under high torque situations. So, because this, you know, it's a Mustang, so all these pieces are structural. So my plan now is to uh, just clean up a little bit more and then hit it with some weld through primer. And then you can see down in here, it's a good opportunity to treat this metal and then move forward. You can see where I had sprayed it before with weld through primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll hit it. I got the can inside warming up. It's 50 degrees in the shop. I like the can to be a little bit warmer than that. That's the, essentially the minimum for painting on uh, for that weld through primer. Anyway, I'm going to get going on this. Okay, so I uh, noticed an issue. Um, I think I got a little crazy with my angle grinder and just nick the corner of this. So you might be able to see it there. Yeah, so you can see it just nicked it and you can slightly see through to the other side 
And you know, this is the perfect time to, to clean that up, make it right. It's this is the only spot. So I got my my Lincoln Square Wave uh, TIG 200. It's my setup, it's one underneath. So I'll be doing a little DC welding on this. And uh, and we're gonna clean it up, shape it, and it should be good to go as far as strength. So I'm gonna get on that right now. Okay, so I just got done putting well through primer on it. And uh, you can see there's my repair. Ground smooth as best I can. Um, so I had to switch over to the MIG. Uh, the Square Wave TIG 200 from Lincoln, you know, it lights off, I believe, roughly around 10 amps. And I, I could not, even at the lowest possible amps, keep this thing from burning a hole through it, uh, which raises a question to me. Uh, I think what's going on is after, you know, this is the second time of, of me grinding these spot welds down, uh, I think I've thinned out the metal a little too much. So I'm worried about when I go to install the upper cowling and weld it to this, it's just gonna blast holes through it. Um, you know, I could do stuff by using a thick piece of of uh, copper or brass and you stick it behind it. I had to do that here in order to, to get the weld to lay down. Um, so we'll see, you know, hopefully I don't have to end up replacing the dash, uh, but if I do, it's, you know, I don't have a choice. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, hopefully it's good and uh, I'm gonna press forward. Okay, so moving on to the frame rails. I'm gonna clean them up and uh, and just get them ready to be put back into the car. So my plan is I'm gonna do some plasma gouging and just get rid of these three welds and that guy should pop right off and then I'll, I'll clean the uh, slag off the car, or excuse me, the frame rail. And then I will do the same for those spot welds right there. I'll just gouge them, get them out. That bracket's coming off anyway for the Mustang II conversion. So, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about hitting it with the with the plasma carter, but that'll just make those come off really quick. And as you can see, I've got some old metal on here. That's all going to get replaced, but it's staying on there for now to help when I realign the um, firewall back onto the car, since that's the original metal and should have ended up in its original location um, on the frame rail. So, uh, with how I did it before. So we'll see. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna have to do some some finagling to get it all to work, but should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one cleaned up and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, so just got it done. As you can see, gouge right through it. Parrot metal's good. And I just did circles around the actual welds themselves on the the piece here and then they just hit it up hit it with a hammer and it came right off so i got a tripod for christmas so i'm going to do an action shot of plasma gouging on the on the next rail so that should be cool all right let's do it all right so getting ready to do the uh, live action shot of uh, plasma gouging so uh, i want to talk about uh, some of the equipment that i use um definitely hear hearing protection uh it does use compressed air it can get a little loud depending on uh how it's bouncing off stuff and then you want gloves because it gets hot and then because it's using compressed air you know it cuts it there's dust and gunk flying through the air you definitely want to breathe that in i have done it without wearing this before for uh i was gouging for about two hours and uh yeah i felt really really terrible later that evening and then uh that prevents your hair from catching on fire and then obviously you need to protect your eyes so uh okay so back to the technique again um you take the, you know, this this is how you cut. You want to be pretty uh, perpendicular to what you're working against, but on here, you put it on, and then you're gonna tilt it roughly 45 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is one pass to get rid of a layer, and then another pass to kind of open up between the two pieces of metal, uh, cutting a little bit into the uh, floor support strip that's there, that's left over, not cutting into the actual frame rail itself. So do that, and then, here, I'm just going to do circles around those guys because, uh, again, I don't care about the actual um, sway bar brackets. So, all right, so let's get to it.
There you have it. So, just an example of it. You can see, separated on its own. And then, there you go. So when on this one, uh, you know, you notice that I started at a nine, or perpendicular to it, because I use what's known as piercing. So, uh, depending on how thick the metal and the, and the machine's capabilities, um, it, and the settings I have it at for, for gouging are, are pretty low. Um, I was confident that it would pierce mostly into the metal I didn't want and uh, left the metal I did want alone. Uh, again, I don't care about these brackets, but you can see it, it, it first when it uh, ignited, uh, sparks went everywhere and then it blasted through, so it pierced through the metal and then I did my circles. So, so I'm gonna clean these up and, and uh, see about getting them on the car for, for uh, some measuring. All right, so I have moved on to the core support. So it's still a pretty decent piece of metal. Um, I should be able to reuse it. And uh, so I just got to get these guys off the bottom of it without gouging into the good metal of the core support. So again, I'm just going to use gouging at this angle so I don't accidentally pierce into the metal I want to keep. So it looks like just three welds on each one and uh, they should just blast away and then hopefully uh, separates with little to no cleanup. So I'm sure there'll be a little bit. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get on it. All right, there you have it. So they came off relatively easy. It took about two minutes per, per bracket to, to get off, but you can see just a little bit of slag left there. Didn't, didn't gouge into the metal, parent metal at all. So I'm gonna clean it up and hit that with some, some primer. And then here they are. See how it's been blasted away? So they're pretty hot. So, all right, I'm gonna get this stuff cleaned up. And, uh, and yeah. All right, so I'm making headway on getting these things cleaned up. Uh, I've got the passenger side frame rail assembly and the uh, core support all done. And when I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, hit them with weld through primer, let them dry, and, and then I'll do another part uh, to this episode. Um, putting them back on the car, uh, just running out of time, but that's all right. And so, uh, you know, there's a little bit of damage as I was taking them off the car. Uh, as you can see, there's a little hole. So uh, I got a piece of, of uh, copper plating going all the way back. And when I say plate, I, it's, it's definitely hundred percent copper. So, um, the reason I have that back there is remember, I'm going to do that mod where I'm running the two inch square tubing through here all the way back. So it should end roughly in this area. Well, if I have slag that builds up on the other side of that as I uh, weld that closed, I'm gonna run into an issue with being able to get the tubing down there. So what I did is I took uh, the copper and a, the, it won't weld to it. So if it tries to drip down there, it'll, the copper will stop it and then I'll be able to pull this piece out and it's got it clamped on there. So I'm gonna hit that with the MIG, uh, and then I'll grind it smooth, and you shouldn't really notice that it was ever there. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that now, and then I'm going to hit everything with weld through primer, set it up to dry, and yep, so I'll show you that next. Okay, so I just finished uh, doing the, the plug weld, uh, and you can see it's right here. So I ground it smooth, and then that spot that was behind it, and you can see it didn't weld to it, and it looks pretty good. And we'll get a shot from inside. Let me see if I can get my light out of my pocket. So, yep, it's right there. So you can see the bigger ones, and it's that small, darker looking one in the back. The one furthest or closest to the front. That's where the weld happened, and you can see it's pretty smooth there. So having that copper plating really helps um, when you're trying to do this. Uh, as you can see, I've got a couple of repairs down in here that I'm going to have to clean out uh, before I 
take it to the next step to run that uh, two inch square tubing down there. Uh, but that shouldn't be a problem. I have a long mandrel that I could put um, some carbide bits on and can just get that nice and cleaned up. And then I'll hit it with some primer uh, just to keep them rusting because water will be getting inside these most likely because yeah, <laughs> they get water inside them. Okay, so that's gonna be it for, for this part. I'm gonna hit this with some weld through primer and then I'll set it over here to dry with its counterparts. So, you can see I got it all nice and cleaned up, ready. Um, I'm just gotta double check the insides of those, make sure that there's not gonna be any obstructions. Um, and then, oh, and then for this piece, since these are so cheap, uh, you know, again, that was welded on in the wrong polarity, so it's, it's gonna be weak. Uh, and the fact that I'm, you know, originally I welded from behind these panels into the new core support. Well, now I'm gonna do it the other way around because the core support has all those holes in it. So this, this is filled with bad welds. So instead of just trying to fix it, I'm just gonna go ahead and spend the money and uh, just replace that one as well. I got the other three. So this one and then the two on that. Uh, so I'll be replacing those as well. So may as well just do this one more time. And that's what I get for not checking my welder. So. Uh, um, that's it for this part and uh, on the next part I will get the four supports to the correct height per the measurements off SOLIDWORKS and then I will get them set in there and start clamping and then I'm not going to do any welding until I double check off my buddy's fastback. So that's what's next. See ya.